tricky, tricky conditional probability, Venn diagrams, maybe the addition rule. Let's see. Uh, question. You know that when a question for Venn diagrams and stuff like that is just full of words and P's and N's and U's, it's going to be a tough one. So it says A, B, and C are three events where the probability of A is 0 0.2, the probability of B is less than 0 0.5, and B and C are independent events. Additionally, the probability of A and B is 0 0.01, and the probability of A and C is 0 0.14. Given that the probability of B and not C is 0 0.03, the probability of not B and C is 0 0.38, and this statement is true, find all these probabilities. Okay, maybe you want to pause this video, see if you get the correct answer, or see if it matches with my reasoning as well. Now before we get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the addition rule and the conditional probability statement and see if it applies. Now the thing about the addition rule is I rarely use it. Addition rule really is for students who don't draw pictures, okay? I'll write it down anyway because it's my job. So we have two events, A and B. The addition rule looks at the probability of A or B. A or B is this, so A and B. Now I've shaded them in different direction strokes on purpose because it looks like the probability of A and B. But what do you notice? The overlap gets shaded twice. So all we do is we get rid of that second load of shading there and now it's only shaded once. Okay, and that's it. So you just need to take away the overlap once. And that is your addition rule statement, which, to be honest, we don't use that much. But there are rare occasions which we do. We'll see if we use it in this one. So conditional probability. This one we obviously use all the time. The conditional probability statement looks at the probability of an event A occurring given something else has happened already. And for that, we can look at our Venn diagram again, A and B. We're saying, what's the probability of A happening given B has already happened? So to say B has already happened, we have to consider the probability of B occurring in the first place, which means we are focused in this circle. Given we are in this circle because B has happened, what's the probability of A happening? Well, if you focus on this circle, where do you see A happening? Well, that's the overlap. Okay, so the probability of A given B is saying, what's the probability of the overlap? So what's the probability of the overlap given that we have restricted all of our probabilities or all of our outcomes to B? And that means we're saying it's all out of the outcomes of B. That's your conditional probability statement. So we may need to use them, we may not. The conditional probability statement we definitely will be able to, we definitely will need to use, um, and that's based on the question. I've seen some given statements there. So, with all these questions, guys, your goal is to sketch the Venn diagram. Yeah, you want to know what does this look like. So we have three events. They've only told us that the probability of A is zero point two. They haven't even told us about the probability of B. They've just said it's less than zero point five. And B and C are independent events. Now, as you read, pick out the key terms and start writing key information or key formulas down. For example, forget about the probability of A being 0 0.2. The fact that B and C are independent is more interesting to me. So, the probability of B and C, so the probability of those two occurring at the same time, is the probability of B times the probability of C they are independent events, they do not influence each other. Now the problem with this is I don't even know what the probability of B is and I don't know what the probability of C is. Right, it's not looking good. They do tell me the overlap between A and B is 0.01 and the, and the overlap between A and C is 0.14. So at the moment I know that you know A is overlapping with B I also know A is overlapping with C, so it could look like this, right? With the probability of A and B being 0 0.01, 
and the overlap with C being 0 0.14. Okay. Given that the probability of B and not C is 0 0.03. The probability of B and not C. So they're basically saying the probability of B and then you're ignoring anything to do with C. Now, the way I've drawn it here then doesn't really make sense. They're basically implying that C is overlapping with B as well. Let's just read on. I don't think this Audi looking shape is looking good. C and not B. So yeah, again, you have C and then there's some kind of non, there's some kind of overlap with B. And they have mentioned here the probability of A and B and C. So this one is looking like the Olympics then. All three circles need to overlap. So it's fine, guys, to just experiment with the different shapes that could be possible. But in this case, we have all of them overlapping. So we have something like this. A, B, C. Now all that says to me then is I need to focus on the middle first. That value, which I can call x, remember in the exam guys you have so much space, utilize it. That overlap is equal to whatever this is. It's saying we want b and c but nothing to do with a. Not a and b and c. Now b and c is this, b and c, and nothing to do with a. That's just this bit. So they're literally saying these two things are the same. Okay, so I've addressed this. They've said the probability of, so I guess we just work backwards, right? The probability of not B and C is 0 0.38. What is C and not B? I want C, I want C, or I want C, and I want nothing to do with B. So that is this bit. Right? So that is 0 0.38. Uh, I'll put that. Okay, not much information there. Uh, next thing is B and not C. So I want B, so I want B, and I want nothing to do with C. That's going to be this bit. That is 0 0.38. Zero, 03. All right. Still not really helpful in my opinion. Although we do have this, I think that's my connection with all of this. All right. Uh, how are we doing that? This is mad. The probability of B and C is the overlap between B and C. That's 2x. So B and C is 2x equals the probability of B. Now the probability of B is all of this, which will be 0 0.03 plus 2x. Times the probability of C, which very similarly will be 2x plus 0 0.38. So all of that, right? 2x plus 0 0.38. We need to expand that and solve it. So we have 2x is 4x squared. Mate, uh, 2 times 0 0.38. 2 times 0 0.38 plus 2 times 0 0.03. So I get 0 0.82. So plus 0 0.82x. Then multiplying those together. 0 0.03 times 0 0.38. Uh, that is plus 0 0.0114. We're going to do that minus 2x. So 0 0.82 minus 2 is minus 1.18x plus 0 0.0114. Solve that quadratic. So we have negative b. Uh, what is that? Negative b plus or minus root b squared, which you don't need to take into account the minus for obvious reasons, all over 2a. But then we just plug in the calculator and hopefully this gives us some nice numbers because this is a bit mad. Uh, what we got? 4 minus 1.18 
0 0.0114. Okay, so I get my first one being 0 0.285 and my second one being 0 0.01. Nice enough. Now the question is which one do we proceed with? Now it does say in the question that the probability of B needs to be less than 0 0.5. Now if these, if we use X to be this, then that's definitely going to be more than 0 0.5. So X is 0 0.1. So since, since uh, probability, wait, what? Since the probability of B, since the probability of B is less than 0 0.5, X is 0 0.01. Okay. Right. Uh, I guess, do I want to do a whole new thing? I don't really because I need to preserve that information. So let's replace this now. So this is 0 0.01 in both of these. 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Okay, uh, what else have we got? We've got, so we dealt with this, dealt with this, dealt with this. Probability of A and C is 0 0.14. A and C is this. That is 0 0.14. Well, we have 0 0.01, so it means 0 0.13. Which means we can actually work out this external bit for C if we know that this bit here in green is 0 0.38. 0 0.38 minus 30, I think that's 25. But guys, you can't be risking it these days. 0 0.25. Right, so that's dealt with. It also says the probability of A and B is 0 0.01. That's this. So that is 0 0.01. If that is 0 0.01 and we already have this, that must mean that this is 0. And if that's 0 and this blue bit is 0 0.03, it must mean that this region is 0 0.03. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, what are we seeing here? Although, when I do that, it gives me that the probability of B is 0 0.02. I think I wrote this down properly. Probability of B is uh, 0. Point... Probability of B is less than 0 0.5. Because that gives me the probability of... Oh wait, no, I'm bugging. I did write, that adds up to 0 0.05, not 0 0.5. No, I'm bugging. Yeah, I wrote it down fine. Uh, yo, what's up? So the answer is the probability of B is 0 0.05, that's all good. The last bit is the probability of A, 0 0.2. So when you add these, you get 0 0.14. If you want 0 0.2, 0 0.14, this is 0 0.06. So now we can work out what's on the outside, uh, which is, so we're doing 6 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 13 plus 25. 6, 3, 1, 1, 13, 25. That's 49. We do 100 minus that, 51. So on the outside is 0 0.51. Got there. So that we've taken into account. Uh, find the probability of B and C. B and C, B and C. That's this overlap. B and C, 0 0.02. Probability of not C. So not C, we have C. We just add them up, subtract from 1. 25 plus 13 plus 1 plus 1. 40. So 60, 0 0.6. Probability of uh, not A given C. Uh, right. I feel like I'm just going to do it here. So this becomes the probability, using our conditional probability statement, of not A and C over the probability of C. Yeah, remember, we're saying given C, so it's out of C. What's the probability of not A happening? 
I already know what the probability of C is. If not C is 0 0.6, then C is 0 0.4. Not A and C. So we're saying we want C, I want C, and nothing to do with A, which is 0 0.26. Which is what? 13 over 20. So E equals 13 over 20. All right. I probably should have just uh, done it anyway. But let's do D over here. So D, we're going to do the exact same thing. So D, that becomes the probability. Now here we have to be careful. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a square bracket. I'm going to say this and this, but this you need to put in a bracket so that we make sure we group the correct terms together. So and B dash. Okay. So it's the probability of this in a bracket and this, all divided by this. Okay. Now, I bugged out earlier, but the probability of B is 0 0.05. 1, 1, 3, 5. So not B is 0 0.95. Okay, saves you from adding all of these things up. But we need to figure out what is the probability of this and this. Well, what they're saying is we want A or B or C. We want anything in here. So I want this. However, I do not want B. So I want everything in this and I do not want B. So what is that? I'm basically going to exclude B now. This. I'm now not including B. So we're going to add up these three probabilities. So that's 0 0.06, 0 0.13, and 0 0.25. So that gives me, I'm going to write 6, 6 plus 13 plus 25 over 95, 44 over 95. And that is our solution. So you can see here in this question, guys, it's an extremely tough question, to be fair. Um, we didn't even need to use the addition rule. Now, there are opportunities where you could, potentially, but in general, we don't use the addition rule that much. The conditional probability statement is super important, though. But if you learned something today, guys, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content, and if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, more details in the description, and feel free to join the Loon Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.